probably thought we should have beat St Kilda. I certainly did. You'd need to be able to finish the job and just do it. Right, our start was uh, just not acceptable. Hmm. Well, I think they just outrun us. Like we, we, we just on our hands and knees early in the match. Like I'm not sure how much recovery sessions our boys have done. I know that the, the good players I've had experience with over the years would have done twice as much and they would have reported and they would have got more massage and they would have eaten right and slept well and just done everything right to get themselves to this game so they could, if it got to that point, they could find something to get the team over the line. Just never went in ready. You know, we, as a club, we didn't go in ready. Mm. It's a shame. And we missed a great opportunity. We've had the whole place, um, you know, sterilised and you have, have to wear boots and gar overalls and garments and do, go in or shower before you walk into our club now. Um, that's... Only joking. Cool. Was I looking at you? <laughs> Smith, lameless. <laughs> Quip at the end, but it was a serious edition of the Bomber Diaries. Bomber, welcome. Yep. Rusey, hello. Two losers. Uh, but you both come from the MCG, so let's start there. What did you see today? Oh, terrific game. Just the level you got to get to. I think we took all our players along there to, to watch and across the, the ground. But just the level, and I was hoping for a good game. You're expecting a good you game. Took the whole team, yeah, we took the whole team, the whole list took them across and just to show them the level that you got to get to and it didn't disappoint from a coaching point of view and a, a teaching tool no you question did you talk to them after the game no no because i mean by the time it sort of finished they were all sort of filtering off halfway through the last when i think stevie j kicked his goal and pretty much everyone yeah. left but yeah. we'll talk about it tomorrow and, and have a chat about it in the context of where we're at and where you got to get to what did you think from it oh, i thought the same i thought it was an excellent game had everything we had uh, it was fierce it was a contest game it was skillful high marks Hard hitting. Um, it was close all day. It was just uh, I, I, what point of difference is is how organised the, mm. the both teams were. Yeah, you know, it was like two just smart teams working against each other. So that's Fantastic. what I think coaches can see, yeah. rather than the punter yeah. Yeah. and the media. I mean, you guys are the coaches. Oh. You look, you see, look at you, look, you both look at stoppages. And yeah, yeah. You hate the word structures, <laughs> but you look at where everyone's standing, mm. and you look at it and say, God, that's great, that's great, that's great. Oh, I've got to tell. I've got to tell Ethel that. I've got to tell so-and-so. Yeah. So what, right? what you also look at, Robbo, is, is everyone's trying to do the same thing, but they just do it better because yeah. they're, they're pros. They're just professionals at what they do. And when you've got a young team, a developing team, that's what you're hoping they watch. So, so it's not, it's not uh, miracle dust or anything like that. Yeah. It's, these are the things that we're trying to do that they do better than, than anyone, those two teams. And they do the it moment. over and, they and do it over, over again. And over and over and over again. It's predictability yeah. that you always talk about. That's right. Yeah. And so then when a central figure was required, Tom Hawkins stood up. <laughs> yeah. yeah, he was fantastic. Yeah. Fantastic. He won some crucial marks, didn't he? Just rippers. Why is Tom Hawkins able to do that, Bomber, and you've got major problems right now with your with your tall forwards? Oh, he's, I think he's in his sixth year. Yeah. So... He wasn't that uh, good for the first couple. I remember. He Did yeah. you ever write an article saying you should sack him or trade him? No, I, I would never say that. Yeah. Wouldn't no. have been you, Jerry. <laughs> <laughs> well, it wasn't me. <laughs> no, I don't. No, but no, there, there, there was, was a lot of talk. There, there was, was a lot, lot of criticism. There was a lot of pressure on him. Yeah, there was, and then it turned. Mm. Um, have you got problems with the Ezra at the moment? No. no. We had a week off. What do you mean you had a week off? <laughs> Which week did you have off? The Fremantle one or the St Kilda one? No, no, the Fremantle one was uh, just everything wrong with that week. Um, players down with flu and uh, losing a player the morning of the game. David Myers, experienced player, uh, got up, lasted about 10 minutes, and then the heat was uh, was compelling. Uh, it was 33 degrees. How much did it play a factor? Because I, I <coughs> you, you listen to coaches and they say, it's no excuses. This is AFL. This is top notch. Yeah. But there are reasons sometimes why you perform like that. How big a reason, and we spoke to Brendan McCartney about it after the dogs played over there in 35, did it have a major effect and did it affect the result on Saturday night? Was that taking away from St Kilda? No, nah, St Kilda was fantastic. They were fantastic. And we didn't play well enough. But there was, there's also a reason why we didn't come to play well enough. And I think, yeah, I've been thinking about whether you should use it or not. But, but <laughs> six days coming back from 33 degree weather playing a game in, um, in Perth, it's, it was hard. You put the responsibility on the yep. players in the yep. way that they prepared themselves. Yep. Um, do you accept the interpretation that you've blamed them and they've I've come up short of their, pr pr their professional oh. standards? No, no, no. I don't know what they've done. But um, I just know that the good players I've had experience with have done, always do a lot. And if they're not recovered from the game, then they do more. 
I, I have no idea what our players did. So how would I'm you not blaming how them. How, uh, you didn't blame them? No. So no. how would you not know what they did? Oh, because it's all the extra stuff like that uh, you, in their own time. Like Gary used to do, Gary Ablett used to play the game, do a recovery session, then 11 o'clock at night, he'd go in the water again by himself. Still does it up at Gold yep. Coast now. So dub double recoveries thing. after games, every game. I think the other thing that people don't necessarily know, that with the Players Association agreement, players get a day and a half off a week. So if you're coming off a six-day break, and what, what Bomber's saying is absolutely right, like when you're at the club, you know what they're doing, but they've got a, a day and a, and a half a day education day. So they've got a day and a half so to recover, they've got a day and a half off, there's three. Yeah. You've got a main training session, there's four, and you don't want to kill them day and four Friday, or five because so they're that's right. playing again. So a lot of the stuff does have to take place outside uh, work, if you want to call them work hours. A lot of the stuff has to take place outside work hours. And that's why, strange as it might sound, we don't know what they do because we're not allowed to, mm. to know what they do. So well, you uh, Have I been blamed, have I, for blaming no, but I think people are wondering what were you, who, who and what were you referring to? I was just referring to it because... I'm just wondering, like the way they played, whether they did everything they had to do during the week. Obviously, they've come up short. You know, the club's come up short um, because mm. we obviously lost a good opportunity to win. And that's not taking anything away from St Kilda. St Kilda's fantastic. St so Kilda saw your. We were better than that. Mm. St Kilda, St Kilda saw how you played in the first couple of weeks yeah. and put in a game plan that really stymied. But you, you guys couldn't move the ball, Bomber. You're going around and around oh. and around. Did you uh, do you accept that they yeah. put in a good plan, good put down plan? Oh, it was a good plan, no, absolutely. And, and if we were in front of Hawthorne two weeks ago, yeah. at um, just a minute to go, so I don't know, so that we can, how can we play so good and then so poorly? That's why yeah. everyone's asking the question. Yeah. Like the, the worst thing you say about mm. a football team is, how do you how do you close the gap between yeah. your best <coughs> and your worst? Against Hawthorne, it looked like you're going that way, and against St Kilda. It looked like it was going. We played like we played in pre-season, in the in the in the challenge. Nab, nab challenge. Nab challenge, where we didn't look like we could play that well. So. I think I think one thing that's got lost on St Kilda, and everyone talks about, and there are different levels, but everyone talks about Geelong's leadership and Hawthorne's leadership and Sydney's leadership. I mean, let's take our hat off to St Kilda's. I, I don't mm. think enough credit's been given to to Rewald and Hayes and Montagna and Snyder and Dempster and Clint they were Jones. They all the best players on the weekend. Who you know, they're, mm. they're, that group that's been together a fair while and had a lot of success didn't win an ultimate premiership. But I think you've got to give a lot of credit to those guys because if you do have a strong core of players that have been through some success, they can pull a lot of other guys along for the ride. And that's what those guys are doing at the moment. And you bring in some reasonable youth. Yeah. yeah, who come along for the ride yeah. and use the ball pretty well, like a they were exciting, yeah. mate, weren't they? Yeah. They were exciting. Yeah. They, were, they played well. got a bit to look forward mm. to. So yeah. your challenge is now to get Essendon up in an acceptable manner for Anzac Day. Which another another six-day break. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So look, Essendon has provided uh, the viewers of 360 a special chance to attend the match. Okay. Um, two passes to the pre-match cocktail function, food and drink, two reserve seats at the MCG. So this is um, this is a brilliant possibility to be at the Anzac Day game. So two seats in the box. Is no is use Twitter and hashtag AFL 360 nice your favourite Anzac Day memory? Now we don't want something that happened on the field. We want your personal experience of what was your best Anzac Day memory, and uh, the winner will be announced tomorrow night. Um, how formidable a challenge is it to be set for Collingwood? Oh well, it's just like every other week, mate. We're going to uh, just we worked it out. We'll probably take a pretty light week, and we won't overburden them. We won't concentrate too much on the on the weekend gone. It's all about Collingwood and uh, putting in our best effort. You know, you'd expect that we'd play a lot better. Carlo Ford or back? Are you wrestling with that again? With no, Bill? I'm not. No, some people are, but <coughs> I'm not. No. What, what are you going to stick with it? Oh, I am, yeah. yeah. But, but he might be out of the side. So. Uh, when you see a guy lacking confidence, mm. and you've had him yeah. before, <coughs> you spoke to him at three quarter time to yeah. see how it was going. But when a guy's out of confidence, he's not going for his marks mm. and getting it, waiting for it to jump on his head. What do you guys do as a coach? He's got talent. You send him back, or how long do you, can you carry him in the team? Well, it varies from yeah. player to player. I mean, often you'll you'll get them to go and watch vision of their, their games where they've played well. Sometimes you'll move positions. Um, you did that after that Yeah, we did, horror we did game. that after, after the game. Worked. And that worked uh, for a lot of our players. Um, a lot, but a lot of times it just comes back to the old-fashioned hard work and preparation, yeah. as, as Bomber touched on before. No magic dust, There's is no there? Magic no dust, magic dust, you know. Dust. And sometimes they do have to go back and play seconds just to get some form. Sometimes you keep playing them. So yeah. I think it varies Bomber from player to player. Yeah. I think he's just got to work and run. Like he's just, uh, you know, playing down back last year, he, he would run with um, 
I don't know yeah. if he had to, but uh, up in the four line, he's just waiting for the ball to come in, you know. When he went there last year and when he played as a junior, he moved. He's, mm. a, he's got amazing aerobic ability. So just use it. Mm. Uh, you'll coach against the Sydney Swans for the first time on the weekend. Uh, doubtless you had a look in. Uh, John Longmire described it as an extreme effort. Finally, the extreme effort was back. What did you see in the Swans? Yeah, I just thought their, their tackling pressure was, was very good. I mean, the game sort of started... Yeah, you know, as, as a team that was a little bit down on confidence, as the Swans were, but they just worked their way into confidence through hard work, tackle pressure, you know, the stuff that they've been renowned for for many, many years, the stuff we saw today, Geelong versus Hawthorne, and that's what got them back in the form. You talk about confidence, mm. Robert. You get your confidence back by just working really, really hard, and that's what Sydney did in that first half, and then they started to play some really good football in the second half. Tackling is an enormous barometer. Yeah, it is. Carlton, mm. Sunday night, yeah. 88. It is. 100, no, no 100 plus. 100 yeah. plus is grand final-like yeah. intensity. Absolutely. They're the best games Sydney. too, aren't they, when yeah. there's pressure on the ball carrier? Yeah. When, like today, with the yeah. pressure in some of those moments was yeah. just, it's just fantastic. Yeah. Will you plan for Tippett and Goods to play? <sighs> it's hard to, I mean, it's really hard to tell. I mean, you, you sort of monitor them. But I guess the difficulty, and I've only been back here footy and Bombers and I back, back this year, but it is hard with the sub, and I can only speak for myself, but it's hard with the sub. I mean, unfortunately, we saw with Juddy, and I heard Juddy speak, and he felt that he was ready. But, I mean, that's in the back of every coach's mind. You know, we went through it with Dawsey a couple of weeks ago, and it was probably the fact that he trained so well, but he'd been training for probably sort of seven or eight weeks, you know, leading into that. So, mm. look, every player's different, every every coach, but it's certainly challenging when you do have a start. How are you going to go, Rougey, with uh, your old team? <laughs> Huh? That's a you didn't leave on good here. terms, did you? <laughs> well, I thought, I'm I, allowed to throw I, that I, thought I did, but uh, like, apparently <laughs> I did. Happened since. But I thought I did. Um, <laughs> oh, look, every game's sort of the same. You know, it's, it's interesting when you. I mean, I'll probably look forward to seeing some of the players and coaches before the game and out in the ground. And but to be honest, we've got enough sort of concerns of ourselves that every game's pretty much the same for yeah. us. Every game. You get a read on the players, though. So I reckon you do. The players, what? How much do they want to? perform this week. They know they're playing their old team. I think uh, you might get a really good read from the players. I hope you don't get beaten by 130. No, I hope not. I'm not saying that, yeah. but, but I reckon they'd be pretty keen to get up. That's what yeah, I think from a think. coach, maybe it's different for players, but I think for a coach, I mean, when you played against, and I'd played against my old team playing four Sydney games this week, that's pretty nerve-wracking, you know, playing against your old team. But I'm not sure coaching Bomber is a bit different because yeah. you do your preparation. You, you meet out in the ground, you talk to the coaches before the game, wink at a couple of players and then... You become sterile, you coaches, don't you? It's all clinical. No. No? No. Good. It means something. Coach. It means something to him. Of course it does. <laughs> yeah. Of course it does, mate. All right, uh, that's all we've got time for. Still no video review. It's got to be in We haven't spoken about a video Bomber review. And good luck. Good Thanks, thing. guys. Okay, See tonight on the couch, Chris Scott, direct from the MCG, the Cats, the last unbeaten team in 2014. He'll be there with Jared Healy, Jason Dunstall and Kevin Bartlett.